you've been watching my channel for any length of time then you'll know that I'm a very strong believer in the importance of fundamental knowledge. Uh, we have governments worldwide these days where the uh, people running them have no fundamental knowledge of the things they're talking about and it causes all sorts of problems. I can't do much about that but I can address uh, misunderstandings uh, in electronics and that's what this video is about. Um, a few months ago I posted uh, a video on a fault I'd found in one of my Kunking KP184 electronic loads. One of the two terminals was shorted to ground due to some internal mechanical damage that had occurred during shipping. And um, the comments said that I'd made a mistake when I'd shown the measurements in the video because I only showed a, a short between one of the terminals and he said that uh, both terminals should have been shorted to the ground because there's a low value shunt resistor between the two terminals. Now I'm not trying to pick on anyone, I'm just trying to uh, get across the fundamental way that these loads work and of course there cannot possibly be a low value shunt resistor between these two terminals otherwise this would just be a low value resistor and it wouldn't ever be able to fulfill any other purpose because you'd just effectively always have a short between the two terminals. And just to prove that point I've got a meter here set to ohms and we should have a fairly high value resistance between these two terminals because the unit switched off and so there's nothing active to connect them together and as you can see we do indeed have fairly high value resistance. The other thing I would say is that so I've been an engineer for 50 years and I never take a single reading and make a determination based on that so I wouldn't ever have just gone single reading no it's faulty. I would always take multiple readings, reverse the probes and um, make a determination based on multiple readings so if you do see a single reading in a video then I'm a certainly it's because I'm trying to edit the videos to make them uh, less boring and a sensible length. Um, but almost every type of testing I do is fairly uh, in depth and I don't just take single readings. Okay, so I now will very briefly explain how the electronic load actually works and why we can't have a low value resistor across the terminals. I'm not going to go into detail in, in, uh, as to how the circuitry works, just the basics behind how they normally operate. Okay, so firstly, in his scenario, it would be organized like this. Uh, this cannot possibly be the case of course because otherwise it would just always be a low value resistor uh, which would make the entire unit fairly pointless. It would act as an electronic load but um, it only by virtue of it applying the same load resistor across the terminals all the time uh, which is not of course what we want. So if we take the two terminals the way these actually work is there may be a low value shunt resistor connected to one of the terminals and there should be a divider chain of some sort connected across the two terminals. And this is so that we can measure the voltage across the terminals and the current flowing out of the terminals or into the terminal. But this does not connect directly to the other terminal. What we normally have is something such as uh, an FET or a power transistor that would connect uh, across to the other terminal. We then have an amplifier of some sort which picks up either the current and or the voltage and it would use these in some sort of feedback uh, system to control the FET. So in other words we have a, a kind of a closed loop here that's used to control this FET and depending on how much this FET is turned on or off we can of course control the current flowing through the uh, terminals. And by doing this we can implement either constant current, constant voltage, constant resistance um, by virtue of the algorithm that we used to control um, the feedback and the power device. So that's how these work. So it means that um, you won't get um, a low impedance or low resistance between the two terminals because the shunt resistor is not directly between them. 
it is between one of the terminals and uh, the power device. In fact, the, the architecture is normally much more complex than this, and chances are there's also an FET uh, on the low side as well. So um, you'll never read a low impedance between the two. So that's the way these work, and as I say, it wasn't a mistake that I'd made in the video. Um, it's just a misunderstanding on his part as to how these work and um, you can of course short one of these to ground which is uh, the problem I had and it meant that when I tried to implement this in a system where I had more than one electronic load then it shorted um, this supply that it was connected to it was actually the external supply that it shorted to ground um, but it's, that does not follow that the other terminal should read as a short to ground as well. So I hope that clarifies uh, that point and uh, explains why uh, electronic loans are not arranged like this. And um, if you want any more information on electronic loads and how they operate, uh, then please leave a comment.